Hey there, Nick Jutakis here. In this video, we're gonna go over how to approach solving a difficult or vague programming problem. So these are going to be a couple of different things that I keep in mind when trying to solve problems that require, you know, a decent amount of thinking, or I don't really know where to start. So by the way, you know, this video is going to be going over a blog post that I wrote this morning here, not so much live coding or demos here, but uh, it really came about when I read this one post on Hacker News a couple of weeks ago, where someone asked, you know, how do you battle against self-inflicted anxiety or paralysis when you're attempting to tackle a problem you're not sure has a solution. You know, they say they have a very open mind to solving problems, but it can make it really difficult to come to conclusions. You know, anyone know what I'm talking about here or any advice? And I really like this uh, topic here. You know, it was very interesting to me, you know, especially as someone who has had similar thoughts in the past. So it made me really think like, what do I do nowadays to help overcome these thoughts, right? Like anything, these thoughts uh, typically don't just disappear, but you become more equipped to dealing with them. So I just wanted to write out a post here on what I do here. And uh, yeah, well, the TLDR here is there's basically four actionable steps here or tactical actions you can take here. You know, experiment, short feedback loops, visualize and wishful thinking. And uh, in this video, we're gonna go over some examples of all four of those things and, you know, basically define what those things are. Now, in the past, I have written about breaking down problems and went over why it's like a really important skill to hone. You know, I still very much stand by that today. I'm gonna leave links to all these in the description, by the way. Right now, this is hosted on uh, localhost, but it will be published on my public blog by the time you watch this video here. But, you know, that one post around breaking down problems here. You know, we're not going to go over that or any of these other posts here. You know, they're just linked out here in this article if you want to read them, but more details are there about those specific topics. But yeah, you know, in this post, we're going to focus on those four to go from basically, you know, I'm internally paralyzed by choice or unknowns to, yeah, I kind of know what I need to do to move forward here. So yeah, let's start with uh, experiment. And, you know, it's not always necessarily doing these things in this specific order. You know, it just felt naturally to write about them in this uh, order here. So yeah, one of my favorite things to do here is definitely to tinker and experiment. Uh, I would certainly classify myself as an exploratory type of developer. You know, I really like to just crack open a code editor, write some code, see how it works, uh, see some output, which we're going to talk about a little bit later here. But yeah, that's just the way I operate. Let me know in the comments below, like, how do you operate? Like, would you classify yourself as exploratory or something else here? So yeah, uh, what does it actually mean? Well, for example, you know, let's say that I'm researching a couple of different tools, right? A, B, or C. It doesn't really matter if these are, you know, libraries or or end solutions or web frameworks or you know something like that, right? Basically you have a choice and you're not really sure which is the best one to pick. But uh, they all three definitely have potential and it's kind of close on which one you should go with, right? So what I like to do in those cases is, you know, I'll just make a proof of concept with all three of them, right? This really helps you avoid getting stuck in theory craft mode for an extended period of time. And it also really prevents your future self from always wondering like, what if? You know, if you pick one without trying the others, uh, that uncertainty uncertainty of really just wondering if the grass is greener on the other side can uh, really, really, really drain all motivation, right? So, you know, let's say that you don't do any experimentation here and you just read a whole bunch, like you spend a ton of time just, you know, watching videos, uh, reading blog posts, looking at documentation, which by the way, uh, we get into like, those are still good things to do here. But like, if you just go with B in the, in the middle there, let's say, and you never really try out A or C, then yeah, this what if is a killer because, you know, three months down the line, or something, you might just be wondering like, hmm, I don't know, B is pretty good, but like, uh, like C, uh, could it have been better? I don't know. So, you know, just proof of concepting all them out up front helps you get around that because you can kind of get a feel for all three of those things uh, before you pull the trigger and kind of go all in with one of them. Now, you might be thinking though, like, eh, I don't have enough time to do that, right? But look at it this way, right? You know, if you spend a huge amount of time in research mode, you know, such as reading posts, watching videos, reading docs, blah, 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 then you're investing a lot of time already. Um, you know, if you're building something that you plan to maintain for years, then spending a couple extra few hours up front to try a few things out or a day or whatever, it's a uh, very well time spent here. And it's not always extra time too to make these proof of concepts, right? You know, sometimes experimenting can actually be faster than uh, reading. Um, yeah, if you can get your answer pretty quickly there. Now, you know, again, don't get me wrong here. Uh, I think initially reading and doing research for all these things, all, all the different choices there, it's a great idea. Um, it really helps move the needle forward on coming up with your choices even to begin with, right? Because like, well, if you don't do any research, then how do you even know that, you know, these three tools exist? So there's never escaping that amount of stuff there. And uh, yeah, you know, I've, I've uh, also written around, you know, how to research anything too. I'm pretty sure, yeah, I made a video about this one. I don't know how long ago it was. Yeah, a couple of months ago. Well, actually, holy cow, wait, that's 2022. 
it's been a year. Interesting. Okay. Well, you know, link to that one will be there. I'll actually leave a card up for that one for YouTube. If you know, there happens to be a video for this one, but yeah, I mean, that just goes into detail about just researching things in general. Um, but yeah, I mean, you're just going to learn a lot from implementing the tools or frameworks or, you know, whatever you're trying to choose from. Um, and I don't know about you, but I don't know sometimes I can just feel if a tool is going to work or not, just playing with it for a bit. And uh, you can't really always get that feeling from reading, um, especially, you know, this really comes up only for me, like when you're in the thick of it, trying to solve your specific problem, because sometimes if, you know, you read something, uh, the demo looks pretty good for the blog post, or, you know, maybe you're watching a five minute video on how to do something. And it's like, wow, this looks amazing. Like it's going to work for me. And then you try to get into the thick of it and actually do it for your specific thing. And you're like, wait, I just ran into this and that and the other thing. And like, what the hell? Like, what am I going to do now? Um, yeah. So just getting into the thick of it, proof of concept, try something out. Yeah, really, really good idea in my opinion. Um, also, short feedback loops. Um, yeah, I just love seeing the output of what I'm doing, right? It's almost like a cheat code, like you just print something and you can see it. And it's like, yeah, now I understand. Uh, that helps so much. It's like almost ridiculous. Um, but there's a lot of different ways to describe like, what is a challenging problem, right? But one of them might just be like, I don't know, right? There's a lot of different combinations of state and logic, right? Your program can output many different things based on many different conditions here. So oftentimes it's littering a bunch of print statements around can help a lot because as soon as you see what something is set to, then you can start to make sense of it all here. And, uh, you know, on a really, really related note here, having that short feedback loop uh, helps you make incremental progress, right? I've written about question driven development here. And I think that's always uh, a nice way to move forward while seeing the results of what you're doing. You know, the goal there is to basically go from reading to doing and then repeating that loop very quickly here. You know, it really depends on what you're doing here. But let's see. Uh, yeah, this post here goes into some more details around that. But, uh, you know, the goal there is like, I don't know if you're building some web application or something like that and you're trying to learn the framework, you want a short feedback loop and you want to have some very direct questions that you can ask yourself, like, you know, how do I add a new route in uh, Ruby on Rails? Or how do I do some specific query with SQL Alchemy with Flask or something like that? You know, you have a very, very distinct problem that you want. Cool. So go look up that problem and then go and actually do the solution there right at the point where you're looking it up here. So you have a very short feedback loop. And when you repeat that and you go down this like question driven development route, you end up asking many, many, many different small questions, but all of them help move the needle forward and uh, kind of just helps you see where you're at here. And yeah, you have a big, big problem there. You know, ultimately you're breaking these things down into smaller ones. Uh, also visualizing is a very big thing that I like to do. So this is also pretty related to the above, kind of, sort of, right? Like you're printing out output, outputs or debug logs. Uh, that definitely helps a lot. But you can take this one step further and visualize, you know, what you're trying to build with diagrams and charts. Also, you know, I will say when I'm trying to figure things out initially, I'm not a really big fan of process, you know, so I don't use any fancy like diagram tools or whatever, because for me personally, I don't know, they all tend to get in my way and they really, really pull me out of the zone. And that's like the opposite thing of what I want when I'm just trying to figure something out. So I keep it super simple here, just throw out a piece of paper here, put it on the desk, grab a pen and go at it. Or sometimes I'll use a whiteboard as well. Like uh, quite a few years ago here, this is my old uh, apartment setup here, but you can see a whiteboard in the back here. You know, this actually, this post goes into detail of like how to you know, find your own whiteboard very cheaply at Home Depot, basically. Well, I don't know about nowadays with uh, different rates of things because I wrote this one in 2017. But anyways, like whatever, you can make your own white whiteboard pretty quickly here for a uh, low cost. And uh, that can help quite a bit here uh, if you just like visualizing things as well, right? And you know, whether or not that you use pen or paper or whiteboard, or even if you have like a stylus and you do like a digital uh, whiteboard on your computer or you have an iPad or like whatever it happens to be, right? Uh, in my case here, like I'm just not looking for perfection. Uh, I just want to have some lines connected to a couple shapes with maybe some short text labels. Uh, there's definitely no secret formula or rules. Like I don't always use triangles to connect this thing with like dotted lines that only point in this one direction. I don't care about any of that. I just want lines, shapes, text labels. I just want to be able to see the stuff come together here. And I kind of treat these drawings as a means to an end. In other words, like I kind of just throw them out when they're done. I'll erase them on the whiteboard. Uh, the paper will get thrown out at some point if I do that. Um, but although it depends uh, if I'm doing something where the actual deliverable of this thing is some type of diagram, then uh, I'll keep those like scratch pad diagrams that I've made and then convert them into like, you know, a decent looking diagram using some tool or whatever it happens to be. Uh, but that's more like a, a much late, you know, later game step here. This is way after picking tools and things. This is more like, hey, you know, a client wants me to deliver this thing and like a diagram is a part of that delivery. Yeah, I'm not going to give them like my chicken scratch on a piece of paper unless they want that. But oftentimes I'll, I'll use some tool there. 
Um, but yeah, the last one here is uh, wishful thinking. And by the way, there's way more than four, I suppose. Like, but these four came to mind immediately when uh, I was just thinking about that one problem that one person said in Hacker News the other week. Um, but yeah, the wishful thinking, I love this one. Uh, it's just the idea of using your tool or library or, you know, whatever you're building before you actually build it. And it seems kind of weird, but like, hear me out. And I don't think it's that weird. Like, it's actually an interesting concept here. So like a really great use case um, there, and there's way more other ones as well. But like, let's say that you're building a command line tool, right? Like before you even pop open your code editor to start coding, yeah, just come up with ways you wish you can actually use this tool if it, you know, if it actually existed. So yeah, maybe open up like a blank paper or, you know, a blank uh, file in a code editor or something. And just like type out the actual command uh, that you would like to run. Like, are there some positional arguments? Are there some flags? Are the flags optional? What are the names of some of these flags? Can you repeat these flags? Like, you know, little things like that. Uh, just seeing how you can uh, develop the tool itself without actually writing the code. You know, you want to see how it is going to be used in the end. So this really, really, really helps you discover a good API for using your tool. And an API in this case is uh, kind of a loaded term, right? If you're building a command line tool, your API or basically, you know, the sub commands and positional arguments and flags, you know, if you're building a library, these could be function calls, et cetera, you know, just, you know, API is that what, that's what that means in that context there. And uh, yeah, I do this all the time and it applies to developing web apps too, right? For example, if you have a typical, you know, MVC style web application, doesn't really matter, but you know, you got the controller there and uh, well, maybe you call out to a model or some like domain driven design interface that doesn't exist yet. You know, uh, you know, you, this really, really helps you figure out how to name something nicely or what level of, of abstraction something should be at here, right? This controller here, you know, it's kind of just taking input from the user and then maybe calling into some models or database tables, or whatever it happens to be here. And uh, yeah, I don't know. When I do this, it's like wishful thinking, right? Like it kind of you can call these different uh, methods or functions or whatever before they exist and kind of play around with it. And it's kind of weird. Like I do get like a dopamine hit from this as well. So like, even if it doesn't functionally work yet, you know, I can see the progress and it motivates me to move forward because then I start to think like, huh, life is going to be pretty good if this thing exists the way that uh, I wish it to exist here. And uh, the really fun part is uh, turning that into a reality. Uh, and now you actually have an end goal in mind. So it's way less vague, right? And you also have the option of working backwards from your goal. Like, you know, you have your wishful thinking end game implementation, or you can do it the other way and just kind of move forward towards your goal. So you kind of have two options now. Uh, and all this really happens very quickly, by the way. And it's like super malleable, right? Like you can change your mind very quickly. This is not coming up with like really like hardcore specifications for days or months or whatever. Like this flow here, this stuff like literally happens in minutes, right? You write a function that you wish existed with some parameters or whatever, or, you know, a couple of different functions, like, you know, some way of using the thing that you want. Uh, if it doesn't feel good where you come into a limitation, well, you just change the words there, make it work uh, without actually writing the code, you know, make it so that, uh, you know, this is going to be able to solve the problem that you have here. Yeah, I don't know. Like I, I just go on to say here, like the easiest code to change is the code you haven't written yet. So this is a great way to be able to do refactorings of how things will work before you actually go down the path of writing, you know, hundreds or thousands of uh, lines of code here. Uh, so that's kind of it for this one. Kind of a quick video, kind of, um, you know, glazing over a couple of different topics here. But, you know, I hope it helps you move forward on your specific problems. Uh, I can do follow up posts and videos about this and, you know, let me know below where I actually take these exact four steps that we went over here, potentially even more, and uh, kind of use them to solve real world problems. So if you want to see videos like that, let me know where I kind of just, you know, go over these four things in the context of actual problems here. Maybe I can make that a series. You know, it's not going to be something like, you know, every week I do one of those, but you know, maybe I'll do every once in a while. Yeah, with that said, let me know in the comments below, like what are some of your tips and, you know, best tricks and ways to solve some problems? Do you also have similar thoughts here? Maybe not these exact wordings, but, you know, reasonably similar. Um, yeah, let me know in the comments below. Also, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up because it really does help a lot. Thanks a lot for watching and I will see you in the next video.